from Bug Eye Guys, and check this one out. This is a very, very handsome Bug Eye Sprite that we completely restored. You'll notice right from the start that it has a cup holder right where the shifter should be. And that's because this is our third electric froggy. Uh, it's a Bug Eye that's been converted to electric. This one has, uh, is our first with Tesla batteries and also the first with this cool thing. You notice this? We, we kind of felt that the Sprite lightning bolt needed to be on the hood. So that's our electric uh, secret code. In case you see one of these on the street, you'll know the one with the lightning bolt on the front is electric powered. But this is a beautifully restored car. Um, we did everything we would have done with a gasoline powered um, re restoration. So it's a, a bunch of new interior and body repair, restoration, everything that we would normally do. And we also tried to make it look as much as a, a stock bug eye as possible. We did use the electronic um, GPS speedo and an electronic tack, this one being an 8,000 RPM tack that we custom made. And then we have here a couple of cool things. This is the startup sequence for this. The right gauge here, this voltmeter, is for the low voltage battery, and that's the one that powers the lights and then and other accessories and then this left gauge here is indicating the power of the high voltage battery which is what determines the range for the electric motor so we have those two systems working in tandem you need both on these electric conversions and uh, so it's kind of cool to see that this is the um, the selector for neutral or reverse or drive and of course the e-brake is stock and three-point seat belts and stock seats. And I wanted to put a stock steering wheel in this one also just to really kind of underline that this is a classic car with an electric power plant. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, oh man, who would do that to such a cool car? Well, we have not made this the dominant part of our business. It's just a piece of our business, but I really think it's gonna be interesting to see in about 20 or maybe 30 years uh, how classic cars will have changed and I'm I'm pretty optimistic that this is going to be a significant part of our future for all of us on the planet and so and and that's whether we like it or not this isn't meant to be a value judgment whether electric cars are the right thing but given that the mass market is moving in this direction we're going to be forced to have classic cars that move in this direction as well and your opinion about all that is fine. You don't need to post that in the YouTube comments. That's okay. Everybody has an opinion about this. But I'm just really proud of the fact that this is such a versatile, a versatile little car, such a versatile power plant, or a little a, a versatile platform, I should say. You know, people have been racing these cars and chopping them up and V8 converting them for years. And so here we have this really striking frog eye sprite that is, you know, every bit as stunning as one that has an internal combustion engine. It just happens to have no tailpipe and an electric uh, drivetrain. And because the car for years has been customized by its owners, we feel a little more comfortable doing these conversions to bug eyes. A couple other really cool things that we custom fit this flip up fuel cap. This is the 220 power um, intake. So the plug goes here for the charger. And the charger is right back here behind the seat. Let's see if we can show you that. It takes about six hours when it's fully discharged. And that's what that does right there is it takes the juice from the 220 and feeds it into the Tesla batteries which are located in the trunk here in a big box and also under the hood. We have it as a flip forward nose and I'll open up the hood for you next so you can see how it looks. So here on the underhood tour of our Froggy, this one has a flip forward nose that's exactly the same with the bracing that we're using and our kit that we're selling in our catalog of parts. Uh, same setup, but underneath, of course, the, the majority of what you see here is the battery box. And those are Tesla batteries from a, a Tesla Model S that had been totaled, so a low mileage Tesla hopefully gave its batteries to us and 
so that we could recycle them. These are the cooling lines with quick, quick disconnects so that we can remove the batteries for service one day if need be. And there is a chill plate here for the controller and all of that is pumped through. We, we use the coil mount, but it's actually a coolant pump that's circulating water through this box and also through the box in the trunk. So there's a fair bit of water plumbing that has to go into this. It's not uh, a massive demand, but you do need to provide the cooling just like the Teslas need cooling and heating of their batteries in, depending on their climate. And we have all the high voltage connections. This is the inverter that steps the juice down to the 12 volt battery there in the front and that's the battery that's powering the, the horn and the wipers here's the brake light switch and also the the pickup for the regenerative braking circuitry that's managed by that computer a lot of really cool technology in here and really an amazing feat of assembly and engineering to get all this stuffed in the bug eye it's not really the ideal platform given that there's not a lot of, of, of extra space on a frog eye, and we take up all of that space pretty much with the batteries. Over here, we have this wonderful contrast between this kind of high-tech universe and this very low-tech wiper motor that was a uh, central wiper motor for MGTDs and Jaguars, uh, all of the cars of that era, very, very low-tech motor, one-speed and then you have all this other stuff powering the electric system. One of the things that I also really like that um, Terry built on this is that we use a cable driven, the same throttle cable that would have come over to the SU carbs that would be here. He ran it over onto a boss on the master cylinder tray and then drove the cable over to this potentiometer, which is all electronic. And that's what's basically telling the battery, telling the computer how much juice to apply to the rear wheels through the batteries. So we have an old fashioned cable speaking to modern technology, all surrounded by, you know, old and new blended together and an air horn here as well. So that's pretty much the, the brains of the operation, the computer to the right and the battery in the center, low voltage battery up in front. And with all of that, we have a really delightful electric package. I think that for people who are new to classic cars, who are perhaps also more open to the electric conversion, if you're kind of curmudgeonly watching this and going, what idiots, why would they do this? Well, again, our mission after selling almost 400 of these cars has been to bring as many new people into the hobby that we all love as possible. And this is one of the ways that we can do that with a, a very, very much of a low learning curve kind of product. It's a single pedal. In fact, I should show you here you can see we're using the same master cylinder for the brakes, but it's just sort of uh, missing its, its clutch, clutch actuation. We've, re we've removed that extra leg of the master cylinder. So very simple, fundamentally a one speed car with regenerative braking. You can drive it one pedal driving and it's fast and it's fun. And it still has, you know, most of the original switches. This is the heater control for the blower. Um, and that blower is only, it's key fed, but it's basically here drawing air and through here, we don't have the water you would normally use to cool, uh, to produce heat. We don't have hot water. We do have hot water, it's warm water from the batteries, but we don't have the engine, you know, 180 degree water running in through here like on an, an internal combustion setup. But there is an electric element inside there that's activated by that switch and then you, you feed the, the, the H knob is pulling air through that element to make passenger heat. I see we need to put another wiper arm on here. We only have about 15, 18 miles on this car, but it's exceeded all of our expectations and it's really a delight to drive. I'll have a driving video for you next week. And that's what we're up to this week from Bug Eye Guys.